Hello, and thank you so much for tuning in to a special edition of the Gold Pill Podcast. I am Meredith, and I'm here with my lovely, talented, um, inspired, motivated, creative co-host, Amy. Hi, Amy. Hello. How are you doing Hi. today, Mayor? I'm good. Um, I am good. I am, you know, living the dream. So um, how about you? <laughs> Um, yeah, living the dream. What can I say? <laughs> right. We just got out of Jupiter and Pisces. So like we really Allegedly, are. Allegedly. Although, uh, yeah. you know what? What are we? Gold pill will always exist in um, Jupiter and Pisces energy. Um, but yes, really, we have moved yes. on to a new Jupiter energy. And I'm excited about it because, oh my gosh, I just feel like for the last several months, I've been under kind of a sleeping spell of sorts, right? Where all I wanted to do is just sleep. And, you know, there's like not enough rest in the world, right? So as soon as I, as soon as Jupiter came into Aries last night, I felt a pop. It was like pop, you know, I was like, oh, all right, you know. And so I assume that things are probably going to start moving pretty fast, pretty quickly. Mm, yeah. Um, and Jupiter... So Jupiter really expands the traits of whatever sign that it's in, right? So in Aries, Aries is the sign of war, which is, you know, we just sent 40 billion fucking dollars to Ukraine, right? So we also have like the, the raging sex war that's happening. Raging here. sex war, gender war, cult, the, it's like, yeah, it's culture war, like 2.0, um, and this time it's personal yeah. Time, yeah, yeah, yeah yeah it's below the belt Ugh, so <laughs> literally yeah 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 literally right so today we thought that we would kind of break up the fucking fuss of all of that stuff that is going on and maybe you know come <clears throat> at you with a little bit of analysis around two characters of this you know, sometimes lame, sometimes exciting movie that we're literally watching because that's how it feels sometimes. Um, and we thought that we would take a look at Elon Musk and Grimes. So first off, we want to make it clear here on Gold Pill that we do not stand, I do not stand for any Elon or Grimes. I don't, we'll get into the specifics, I think, of like how we both feel about him and about her, but, you know, this is more like detached so we can take a look at things. Mm -hmm. I know that right now, Elon Musk is a very polarizing figure. And to me, it's like, yes, <laughs> it is supposed to be that way. Obviously, we're in a time where like, you know, there's a lot of effort to keep us from talking to each other to keep us from mm -hmm. seeing each other's point of view on things, right? So why not throw a billionaire into the mix that has some zany tendencies and, you know, some strange and interesting ideas uh, and- Well, yeah. Elon's interesting too, as we go into Aries <laughs> and the month of like right. war or whatever, is right. he wants to, which is Mars, and he wants to, you know, conquer Mars, which is like, we can, don't need to get into space mm -hmm. and what Mars is, but there is the idea of Mars. And so that's a very interesting uh, thing of him too. He also, he, you, you've said it, he, um, he's kind of this figure for, I don't know, he's kind of, the, I would say the truth movement at this point in time, um, which is 2022, which is kind of sad to say. Yes, um, I also agree with you. Um, I think there's Look, I'll say this. I don't, I've learned long ago, you can't have like an I like them, I don't like them relationship with these like characters just because like, it's like trying to say I like or dislike Trump. It's like Trump is a character who did a lot. It's it's hard to say, you know what I mean? Like for me, yeah. it's like, he, there's so much to it that it's like, I, I, I he's so much, he's everything. He's a totality. And, and for like, Elon, this is the same way. Go ahead. Do you know them? Who are, who right. the fuck are they to you? I mean, I right, 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 right. Well, they're characters on the public stage, right? And so, and but that's just it, it's public. And so, but, so here we are, here we find ourselves where he is, um, you know, trying to buy or has bought Twitter and he is this champion of free speech and he is putting himself out there as this champion of the people, but it's like nothing could be further from the truth. 
Like, I just remember this always. When you see Elon Musk, Meredith helps me remember. It's like you just have to think in the back of your mind, like, oh, there he is. He's talking about, you know, Twitter and free speech. No, he wants to put a, a chip in your brain. <laughs> right. That's what he wants to do. So, and he's got, he, he's probably got so much of his money going into how that's going to manifest and come out and also going to create money. And so I think a logical thinking person has to imagine that Twitter and the amount of data that that it's, that receives on a daily basis is probably going to be linked to his other. I wouldn't go out spending four hundred and twenty billion dollars or whatever it costs, right, on something if I was a businessman that would not then like make me money. Yeah, in, in a so, bunch of different ways. Go ahead, go go like, go. Yeah, I mean, on the surface level, mm, like this to me is surface and kind of cursory, like. Uh, you know, he's a World Economic Forum young global le leader, which like, okay, so there's some people in the narrative right now that are like young global leaders that are, mm -hmm. you know, supposedly like at least in the eyes of some good, you know, in quotes, right? Right. So, you know, like there's Tulsi Gabbard, right? There's Elon Musk. These are examples of like their quote unquote rebellious, like young mm -hmm. global leaders, or it really sets up like the black and white square, I think on like the Masonic chapter Absolutely. And, mm -hmm. you know, we noticed too with, e I've noticed with Elon, there's plenty of black and white symbolism, right? And, you know, plenty of, um, you know, order out of chaos type energies and yeah I mean I think of like Starlink as like you know I've never seen a Terminator series but like there is like this I mean I've heard that I should and I mean I probably should but it is like this there's this genius archetype right and he is like saying that ai and summoning like this ai is akin to summoning a demon you know uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, and you know said recently on his twitter exchanges that most people most humans will be in hell basically and you know he's saying right. these things right and i he also wants to like authenticate all real humans, whatever that means. And I don't, you know, right. I'm not going to touch that right now in this, this episode, right. but, right. but it is like, you know, to me, like a push for digital ID, he wants people to um, pay carbon tax. He said it was high time for a carbon tax and, you right. know, <laughs> I don't know. So I guess like where I get out with it is like, um, you know, it's, I don't know how much for the average person right now who doesn't like sit on Twitter all day. I mean, we have to like parse apart the ideas of free speech, right? And like right. the way that when we sign off on these contracts to join up somehow with these social media companies, the mm -hmm. contracts that we sign and that we agreed to to be there you know void mm -hmm. out a lot of like our ability to say what we want that goes against community guidelines whatever that is right so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know so i wish that this would have the opposite effect of like maybe a mass exodus from twitter Mm. Not in the sense of like shit libs being annoying and like whatever, but like, let's build the real world, you know, that's like, or, you know, build outside of the, you know, the online scape, which is kind of what we're being encouraged to do right now, I think with the North Node in Taurus, you know, is like to also build in your real life and your real world, right? And so anyway, mm -hmm. you know, he's just really like advancing a lot of the agendas that we've been talking about on here. And, you know, he represents, you said something about Mars and yes, there's definitely like, uh, Gigi Young talks about planetary spheres. Um, mm. I think Rudolf Steiner also talked about yes. planetary spheres. 
And the Mars stream, there's definitely like multiple streams of consciousness uh, like at play right now. And like the Mars stream, you know, apparently like on Mars, they did transhumanize and they did go down that path. So it's right. like they're trying to replicate that, right? Um, what we've already done, basically, this is like her, I, her kind the kind of idea is that this is where things like gray aliens came from because we decided to merge with machine and then that led us into this de like massively devolved um mutated state right so yeah um you know there's an energy with mars of colonization and um yes. oppression right and um and also materialism, I think, has like a there's a part of that stream is materialism, which is like, you know, I see like industrialism. Do you see that industrialism? as well? Or? Yeah, totally. Okay. And I mean, right. also like we can look at like Mars and like that stream, and it's kind of like a slightly less evolved, a little bit more oppressive version of Atlantis, which is something mm. that also comes up right now because um we are living in a time where it feels where some of us feel like the consciousness that we left off with in atlantis or the like the stories that we were working on playing out mm -hmm. that a lot of those are getting just like picked up right where like they left off as soon as this sharona nonsense began yeah um, you know, the fall of Atlantis happened when, you know, the Silicon Valley type of energy was like marrying basically like, you know, animal genetics with human genetics and then also mm -hmm. playing around with technology, right? And this led to the flood, you know, so it's right. not like nature takes kindly to any of this either. Uh, right. No, I like that's the vibe to kind of pivot into Grimes that I always get right. from her is very anti nature. And just to kind of play off the black and white, like Masonic board you were talking about, 2018, Grimes and Elon Musk attend the Met Gala. And she is dressed in black and he's dressed in all white. And some of you may remember his jacket because it's been featured recently since the most recent Met Gala happened. And he's like a big deal right now. But it's like a white jacket and it's from 2018. And it's got like the Nova Spicorum like logo of like the, the, the pyramid and all that. But you can't really see it. It's like it's embossed white on white. And then she is wearing a crown that she designed made of um, this substance called Vanta Black, which is like the blackest black you can get. And basically they had to like, she talks about this in a Vanity Fair art, or, um, interview where she had to like kind of con the people who created Vanta Black because it's like an element. And basically what Vanta Black is, is like a bunch of, um, it's graphene or it's uh, the nanotubules bunched together. So she has a crown made out of that. and. So anyways, you have the play on the black and the white, and you also um, have the, what I would assume is, you know how I feel about these like pop stars, Grimes being a pop star, is right. they they lean into representing energies. And I think Grimes is really leaning into representing obviously like an alien energy. She's kind of on the map with having those like alien star tattoos on her back. But yeah. also with the Vanta Black, I've been, we noticed it too in our other podcast, me and Nish, um, with the, the prima donnas that, uh, who was it, Gigi? No, it was Bella Hadid was wearing something that was sort of similar. It's just very black, smoky. It's like they are dressing up as graphene, like they are dressing up as it. it's oh, in wow. fashion. And what I've come to find out about the Met Gala is with exception of, um, Elon Musk, he's a very rich man. He was able to buy his own tickets. Typically what happens is the fashion houses buy the seats. They get people to wear the clothes. So if whatever, Fendi wants to like dress Rihanna, then they'll, they'll arrange that. But they did their own stuff. And when I see the, the Vanta Black, when I see the, the graphene sort of looking like smoky lines and stuff coming out, I'm, I'm wondering, it is, I'm not wondering, it gets me more curious about fashion and how it um, how it braids in or how it weaves into the narrative and how how the energies that it brings in because we know it kind of forces time repeating. Mm -hmm. But yeah, go, I've said a lot. Go ahead. Well, 
I have seen in, um, you know, just my, uh, you know, scrolling affairs have seen this thing happening where it's like wearable NFTs, right? So, Mm. you know, if somebody has like a graphene like shirt, even though that's probably really toxic for their body. If you think about like the, like if somebody has like a literal graphene shirt, Mm -hmm. those nanotubes, all of that stuff is like literally like transdermally, whatever, you know, no judgment. But if somebody has a graphene shirt, they can literally like display a holographic NFT on their graphene fucking shirt, you know? So it's like, I could see how like, there every system is changing right we've like you know every single institutional energy and so this you know could be like the direction of fashion is like this like wearable like nft art and in fact i'm going to predict that we're going to see grimes like rocking something like that in the future at some point like very soon oh yeah you know you know it's interesting that you said that because, okay, so the 90s are back and today, friend of the pod, uh, Jason on Instagram, he yes. was writing about heroin chic and it made me remember like, oh my God, that was heroin chic. It was like the the less, the, the and we talked about it truly in our first episode when we talked yes. about the spirit of Anna and how it's like the taking away, the taking away. And the I was thinking, I mean, yes, the vision. shrinking. And I just, how the graphene, like the aesthetic overlays with the 90s heroin chic is almost haunting when I think about it because it's almost like it could be the same aesthetic but instead of it being like the anti it's the it's it's uh, I don't even know what to call it it's like something that's here but isn't here because it's like the it's, because it's, it's the illusion it's of something. yes yes so I guess like um what was I gonna say okay so this is like largely, I think, to do with like, you know, the sign of Aquarius and this sort of like mm-hmm. speeding up of, you know, of technology. And I think about like how, okay, right now Pluto is in the latter degrees of Capricorn. And, you know, we haven't really seen quite the release of technology that I think that we're going to, you know, I think definitely personally Uh feel like a majority of it might entrap us you know like I don't yeah I'm not like super positive about like how that's gonna go but I think right I think that there is something that's very wafy about the bodies that came out of Saturn in Aquarius in the 90s right that was like Mm -hmm. so Saturn was in Aquarius last too uh like 91 to 94 right so that's kind of the energy we're in the Rodney King riots right like the police brutality protests the you know we've been in that energy in phases really like since like March of 2020 but then also in December really of 2020 we got that ball rolling so we haven't seen I don't think the big like you know uh, you know, a, a big uh, acceleration of uh, quite yet, but it's like, we're seeing these like leaked evidence that it exists and that it's coming soon. Yes. That's what I'm saying. Yes. Do you mind if I pull up um, Elon and Grimes's charts real fast? No, I would love it. Over and we can kind of pick yes. there and see what the fuck is going on. Cause I want to look at like his transits too. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Okay. So this is Elon. Elon. <laughs> okay, so this is interesting. So right now, wow, he's old. I mean, yeah, you know, he's in his Chiron return right now. So this is kind of interesting. So right now, um, Chiron is so Chiron is a dwarf planet. It's like a it's the wounded healer. <sighs> archetype and really reminds us interestingly enough like where our humanity is it's like where we feel wounded right so he's kind of primed 
I think of Chiron and Aries as like a little off or a little weird or like, you know, and the primary theme with Chiron and Aries is actually self-neglect and um, the shrinking mechanism. Interesting. Which is interesting because we're looking at Elon's chart right now. So he has Chiron in the 10th house with the midheaven which is his house of career. So like next year, we could see Elon Musk's career completely take off. And I think he'll receive a lot of hatred regardless of whether or not it's engineered or real. Are you thinking like, I mean, I know you're not going to predict this, but like Neuralink, is that what we're... Chiron and Aries does have to do with a head wound, which is pretty crazy. And it's like that's conjoining his like midheaven, which is like the house of what he's known for, like his legacy, right? So um, super interesting. Oh my God. And then, okay, of course his North Node, which is like your destiny, I guess, or like Mm -hmm. your, um, you know, it's like what you choose to do in this life based on like past lives that you've had, right? So he's got his North Node in Aquarius with Mars. So that's fighting for something or like being active in something because Mars is very action. Mars, Mars yes, is going to yes. fucking goddamn Mars, right? Yes. Mars is active and is very, you know, colonize colonizing, right? And so yes. these energies for him and Aquarius, which is literally like the shit that we're going through right now with the Saturn Jupiter conjunction that happened in 2020 in Aquarius that opened up like a 20 year Aquarius thing, you know? Uh, Yeah. And where we are like going through this metamorphosis into technology, some of us maybe going the more organic Aquarius route. Right. But yes. So check this out. This is fucking crazy. So the eighth house is the house of death and rebirth and transformation it's also the house of other people's money. So there's obviously like a lot of like investors and like people who like have stake in like what happens with him. Like he's not a free agent. He's not acting independently. Duh. Right. He's very handled, just my opinion. But Absolutely. his fucking North Node and Mars are in the eighth house transforming death. I think that is like a pretty huge, like I think that like at some point, based on this, you know, he's talking about things like life extension and healing through, you know, some type of artificial means, right? And he's kind of like the the poster boy for this, like, Mars, Aquarius kind of transhumanistic thing, you know, but at the same time, I don't know, I mean, all right, like Cancer Sun in the first, Mercury and Cancer in the first, I could see that he could like at some level be a sweetie, you know? Right. He has some placements near the sun of the USA chart too, which is interesting because right now we're going through a really like strange phase in the, in the, um, in the story, you know, in yeah, the, in the American story. Right. So he has like some, you know, uh, some, you know, affinity with America at this time. So he's here for some quote reason or whatever. I know a lot of billionaires are like getting out of here right now. Like, uh, just that's something I heard recently in a financial discussion that a lot of billionaires are getting out of here. Um, so why isn't he, why is he still based here? What's that about? I don't know. So that's just one thing that interesting. Yeah. Um, okay. So Let me just take a second too, because so next year for like, is going to be huge for him. Like with Jupiter coming up on his midheaven. What do you know about that girl? What do you know about that? (laughs) Um, You'll have to write him an email and tell him how it goes. Um, (laughs) But yeah, you know, the 2020 conjunctions opened up a lot of difficult cycles for him. Um, so we could see like him getting betrayed at some point, you know what I mean? Like fucking like yeah. somebody comes forward and says, Oh, like, you know, he raped me or right. You know, whatever it right. is. Um, okay. So yeah, that's what I have at the moment for, 
for Elon, I think he's definitely interesting. That Chiron on the Midheaven being like literally a head wound and like the Neuralink thing and how it's interesting that that's coming around right now. You know, if he were a human being, <laughs> right, <laughs> then I would say that this could be a time for him that's very challenging and um, deeply vulnerable and feels too weird. Like there's like this... Yeah. So let's devil's advocate this shit. What if he is like an independent actor and he is a rebel, right? In this moment. Right, right. I was just thinking like, what if, what if like he is of them, but like not of them, like he's in them, but not of them. Like he was right. raised around them. And it's like the same way that we feel about like, you know, probably people we went to high school with, like we would, yeah, we would be considered cohorts with them, but like we were not friends, you know? Dude, when you said, like it's like we went to high school it's people we went to high school with that yeah is exactly literally exactly the energy of um this chiron at the 13th degree and his chiron return that's exact right okay okay like, it's like well fuck you guys you know and it can right. feel kind of wounded and like you know you're different or you're set apart or like that kind of thing you know um I want to look at Grimes, if that's okay, if I might, you know? Go. Oh, yeah. So I saw something recently that said, if astrology isn't real, then why can you pick out Scorpio energy and Aquarius energy? And why does it look like this, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and so Grimes, unsurprising to me, unsurprising. Yes. She has a Scorpio rising. So she literally, like all of the darkness and the alien back tattoos and the weirdness and the high strange, it's very, it's interesting that you said the anti-mother because this last 10 degrees of Scorpio is connected to the moon, which is sort of, that does create a dark, like anti-mother energy. And guess where this eclipse on May 15th that's coming is falling for her. It's happening right on her ascendant. So this eclipse is going to oh, be wow. pivotal for her. And like, she might have to release something or let go of something. So I don't know if they're back together. Like, I'm not sure. If they I are that. like, they're like famously on and off. Like she is, I guess, like I, last I read, she was dating, you know, Chelsea Manning. Um, right. Right. And the famous like WikiLeaks leaker. And then um, she, but she has that baby with Elon, which of course, speaking of the anti-mother, like that was a baby not to have any sort of like prejudice against babies that are born via surrogate, but it is a different, it's not a traditional uh, way. And it's also a way that's facilitated by technology. So I would say there is sort of a, an interesting dynamic. And I'm not sure if I shared it on the show or not, but the anti-mother thing comes because she was talking very candidly in an interview about how she didn't feel comfortable with the title of mother. And I thought that was probably relatable to some people. But then she said like her daughter, who's like two years old, does not call her mother, like calls her Claire, I guess that's her name. So um, these are just things that I find really interesting. And then also she had a weird situation with her mother, I think where she was cut off oh. while she was married to Elon. I think she talks about like, that was one of the, the reasons they might've like allegedly divorced or broken up or I'm not even sure exactly how the extent of their legal entanglements go but um yes, they are yeah. so, they are on and off which honestly to me if I'm thinking of how like the overall like story narratives of someone's life play out Elon Musk is very much about like he is not Klaus Schwab but he's very uh he's on board with not owning anything he says he doesn't own homes which is whatever, which is silly because he could go and like rent a mansion any day. So it's not the same person, same as just someone not owning anything. But the idea of him and Grimes being on and off and having these two kids is very hands off, very laissez faire, very um, age of Aquarius like motherhood, you know? Right. And, you know, that brings up something that is kind of connected that I wanted to share about, but mm. isn't quite like it's kind of connected. People talk about how we're in the age of Aquarius, right? And I think like, yes, definitely. There's part of me that agrees with them, but like 
you know, Masaki was like, you know, if you argue that we're in the age of Pisces, then you're like, you know, not reading it right and whatever. He was being, you know, he was just, I feel happy that he feels comfortable to share his opinions with me and whatever. But yeah, I'm like, I'm not convinced that we're out of the age of Pisces personally. And here's why I think we're very close, but I just remember like in other resets, other times, there was always earth changes. There was always, um, way more high, sorry, way more high strangeness than there is right now in the realm and like way more like event, like sun related type of activity. So I just, interesting. So, right. So isn't it interesting that we're having, in my opinion, like a fake age of Aquarius that Mm. is like an exaggerated version of the redonkulous fucking deception, illusion, nonsense of the age of Pisces. Right. Yeah. So you think of crimes and you think she would be an Aquarius, right? Because she's fucking weird and she's got the alien AI thing going on. Right. Mm -hmm. Grimes Mm -hmm. is a Pisces. Right. And you know, I think that like Pisces, like in its like most shadowy form, it is the creation of maybe a temporary, but very real priest class, right? A new one, right? creation of a new religion of illusions and, you know, or, you know, like, um, like looking outside of yourself, that's all, that's what Pisces, the age of Pisces and deception and darkness is all about we don't have like access to the internal answers and the internal light you know so right obviously like the tide is turning I just remember like there being I think that this is like a fake like first attempt at an age of Aquarius you know but it's yeah kind of, like if you think about like the rising beast or whatever it seems very Ouroboros ish self-eating you know well yeah last forever you- you know, I've been on this for a while, but I think we're like in a competing age right now where I think we're in like a 13th sort of scenario where we do have like the age of Pisces sort of like battle royaling it out with like whatever the feminine like Aeon yes. energy of of Aquarius is going to be and like they are having like a true like, you know, I imagine in my hand like a wizard battle like they are like going at it right now and like you yeah. have like very dark versions of dreams and I think the internet is sort of the brainchild or like the child of like the Aeon of Pisces and Aquarius because it's the dream and it's the technology sort of like merged into Mm -hmm. one um they definitely allude to a lot of this sort of I mean I'm not just getting this on my own they have the over time for the last like 10 years and a lot of music videos they've basically been showing this narrative right and um, yeah, I think there's something to that. I definitely don't think it's clear. I definitely think everyone has the right to figure out when they think we are. But oh, yeah, right. Definitely... I'm just, you know, and I don't oh, give a shit, like, you know, what any, yeah, I mean, you know, it, it's wild to think about because it really helps us sort of understand like what this is because this time if it is anything it is confusing and it is like it gets you off your feet you know what I mean like it gets your oh, footing yeah. sort of out from under you so whatever very much maybe Love not it. so much in the coming weeks here like you said maybe it'll be a little more firm under the ground maybe Mars is still in Pisces for a little while longer so let me check to see actually when Mars comes out of of Pisces real quick all righty and into Aries because that's like you talk about war cries oh my gosh like it's gonna be lit I'm yeah, ready, ready for Go like ahead. the goddamn like slideshow to like you know I got the do. slideshow what do you mean I'm ready for the movie to like I see yeah I was gonna bit. say like are we ready for like the fifth act when like the bombs or you know like the fake bombs or, or just whatever do it just get it over with okay like uh, I know I'm sort of where I'm at with it but cute, it's cute. okay no <laughs> yeah oh my gosh <laughs> I know we don't really mean that it's hard though because when you have a psyop anyway I mean I don't know I don't know how much it's like every day there is something new that is being reported to us whether or not you listen to like the mainstream media that is like here is this existential threat that you get to not think about and it was it's different than yesterday's and it's different from tomorrow's and at some point your brain my brain just goes 
okay, like what's next, you know? And so I do find myself thinking like, well, then just fucking do it. Like do it already. I'm done because it's, you hear all the time about these false things that are happening or maybe they're not false. Maybe they're actually happening, but it's like, you just, I'm, I'm having lived through a bunch of like crazy stuff myself. It's like the anticipation of it is like truly worse in some way than like the yeah. actual fallout of it. I don't mean like the word fallout was very, very unfortunate, but like the tragedy, oh. do you know what I mean? Like the tragedy of something is like the, the lead up to my father's passing was far worse than my father's passing. And it's just, that's the reality right. of the situation. Yeah, it's tough. It's Wait, tough and to be alive. We can only worry about what we can worry about in this moment. Right. But I do feel, you know, like there are people and I include myself in this category who have looked ahead, who know on some level, like what the dealio is, you know, so right. it's up to people like that who can anticipate the needs of the group to ensure the survival of the group. Anyway, so Mars goes, speaking of survival, I'm just kidding. Mars goes into <laughs> Aries on uh, May 25th. So that's going to be like, whoosh you know yeah and mercury state no mercury no never mind no but so anyway back to grimes yes back to grimes so you know she is okay so what's funny about this what's really interesting is that both amy and myself have a strong connection to one of grimes points we are fated to have this conversation indeed right at the moment, I think, because <laughs> Grimes North Node is Pisces and mm. it's at the 23rd degree, which mm. is the same degree as your sun sign and my moon sign. Okay. So she's kind of one of us, like, even though maybe like it's really easy, like too easy for me to extricate her and be like, fuck you, you know, you're selling us out to this fucking communist AI shit, you know? Right. But at the same time, you know, she's a witch, like in the yeah. eyes of the world. And, um, you know, so I kind of like have that, um, I have a, I have a soft spot for anyone with that degree because anyone who has any planets at all in the like very first like five degree like 20 to 25 degrees of Pisces like if I know that you have anything there mm -hmm. then I will be your friend for life and I will defend you to the death you know hang on one second I'm gonna <laughs> um I'm gonna let my cat inside and grab my lighter oh, okay real quick BRB. He wants to make an appearance. Oh, hello, little Casanova. He hates me right now. Um, you know, and it's That's interesting too, because like I could see that like she's got some generational type of trauma to work through. Like, well, definitely, yeah. Right? If I if I looked at her chart, that's probably like the first place that I would go is her Pisces sun north node and her Aries moon all in the fourth house of mothering maternal energy. The fact that she has this combination and doesn't feel comfortable identifying as mother is a little mm -hmm. bit concerning, right? And when we think about like, you know, the way that birth and the perception of birth and the perception of childhood and childhood and these types of things, the way that those are going, I don't like to see that, right? I don't like to see that she doesn't like to, because she's actually here to embrace her more maternal side, her more emotional side, her warm right. side. Um, but, you know, it's interesting because you know, so yeah, she's got a lot of interesting relationship stuff going on right now. Like her Venus is at the 13th degree of Taurus, 
which is normally like a really traditional wifey kind of thing but then there's yeah. the opposition to pluto which is very tortured like sex dungeonish kind of like 50 shades of put me away you know like yeah and um and then venus like so uranus right now is in taurus changing all of the taurus stuff and so she's ha having some switching so I guess like over the course of the next year, it'll be interesting to see what happens within that space. I bet she'll flip flop a couple more times, you know, yes, yes. back and forth between Elon and some of some, someone else who is subversive and interesting to date. Um, and hmm, it's interesting. I'm it's interesting too, because I wonder if the relationship with Elon specifically oh. has created that like sort of dark space for natural life i mean she was always sort of like really into internet culture and like alien really leaned into alien fantasy like as far as i know i haven't like i haven't gone super deep on her yet but um yeah i just wonder because it's like he look we've seen his mom um his mom is always doing like you said that thing with her hand over her eye <laughs> so yeah, she is not I know. Can you stop? Did you have something in your eye, hon? What <laughs> is wrong with you? Yeah. And also, why is it not letting me pull a comp? I'm trying to look at their compatibility now. I'm nosy. I'm like, hmm, what's going on within there? Yeah, where are the shadows? Yeah, and so I, she seems, you know, like a pretty. She seems like a pretty delightful person. Like if you were to hear her in interviews, she has some like weird stuff that she thinks. But I think we would all probably be sort of guilty of that. Um, just because you know, like the internet is a very strange space, and people are saying strange things to you, and you're reading strange things all day. So obviously, you're gonna have kind of like a, a weird sort of personality, a little quirky. But um, yeah, she yeah i don't get like i get the dark vibe from her in conjunction with elon but i think like for, i think she was more like pixies probably before you know she got too either heavily involved in the music industry or my elon yeah yeah uh wow this is interesting go ahead so this relationship is not going fucking nowhere <laughs> okay it's not going nowhere because they have saturn on the seventh house cusp and i think that like they're gonna be together like on least, there like a, at least you a don't... few more years like okay they're gonna be back and forth with each other so you know it's really interesting to me that in their composite fifth house which is the house of children um, birth, right? Expression, sexuality. There's right. like Capricorn, like the very sliver edge of Capricorn, but then there's that zero degree of Aquarius. Mm. And that's where Saturn and Jupiter connected in December of 2020. That's where, you know, uh, Venus and Mars connected earlier this year. That's birth of a new system and a new energy and mm. if you think about their xylophone fucking x1011110111 right 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 how to pronounce and i will not like i will not educate myself on how to learn how to pronounce don't name, don't do better name, whatever but yes. i will say that like mars and jupiter and their composite fifth house it's like giving birth to alien fucking antichrist babies you know what i mean it has that yeah energy to me anyway plus like i mean in their composite chart they have the sun and chiron together like and i have the sun and chiron together so i'm not trying to say that that's a bad thing i think that it can be good or it can be bad or, you know just depends on how you use it right my mom can definitely be ghoulish if you let it if you let it you know and chiron is super important in elon's story um and i think in grime's story as well chiron comes up for her in the house of relationships so attracting that like wounded masculine type figure yeah you know yeah i'm i you know part of me like feels for her a little bit just like dropping in right is because it's like 
she's clearly like a very sensitive little feeler right like a little pixie and then i think what classically happens with these little you know i would call them aeons because i think that they're when they're musical they're just definitely in touch with the heavens right and yeah they get a they get you know um i'm not saying even with like a big bad scary dude i mean i'm not not saying that either but i definitely think that there's like a darkness that is attracted to her light right and i yeah, yeah i worry that her light is no longer are going to be accessible to other people or at least maybe even to her I just feel like there's like he's like not that he's like a bad guy but he's just like a darkness like a shadow over her you know and I think she has to deal with that there's definitely a lot of like you know overpowering outshining like control energies within this chart for sure so I could see that and I mean well he wants to colonize a planet so I can only imagine how he wants to like you know be in relationship with someone he's in love with or you know like there's a very domineering sort of yeah like he wants to basically he wants to overtake people's brains essentially with Neuralink right like he he wants to connect them. I don't even want to go so far as to say overtake them. That would be my own guess, but he definitely wants to connect them. And so I'm like, this dude has a lot of control. And I just think of like, if Elon Musk was like a symbol for not the patriarchy, but like the colonizing situation. And then you have like Grimes is like the symbol for like the, the raw, like virgin land. Like, I just, it's like, I'm starting to see the story play out over and over again of like this dark cloud colonizing energy, snuffing out the light of this like beautiful, creative um, mother, right? Like young mother. I think a lot of people will be able to read more into what I'm saying there, but um, yeah, that's wild. I That's quite a story. That's like a, a tale as old as time, like Beauty and the Beast, right? Yeah. And if it makes you feel any better, right now you know how you have mm. jupiter on your midheaven and mm -hmm. um you know jupiter is the planet of like luck and abundance and ease and hope and a healing and all of this right Ooh. it's like you know usually you get like really strongly blessed with this transit when it's on the back end like cutting out you know mm. but she has jupiter right now right on top of her moon like oh. right on top of her moon in aries so interesting she might be about to choose herself for a minute and have like a real empowered like, well as of the, the 26th one. of april they broke up again so right now she's having a grimes moment i think that she could we could see like a major glow up for her and i also think that like if she's a person yes and this would be the time to arrive at like a su like supreme sense of healing this is the time to look at your mother shit grimes okay listen this yes i will at her don't worry <laughs> oh my god can we at both of them and be like i mean please yeah like talk we need to, to know more yeah <laughs> we'll talk to you <laughs> Elon, we don't want you to snuff out Grimes' light. Make sure you leave a little bit enough so that she can, like, get it back going. Like, she can tend her own fire and, you know, continue to be a light to the world. I've kind of, I guess, gone totally, um, you know, 180 on my situation with Grimes and with Elon. It's not that I still don't think that they... I feel like um, I'm looking at them more from an outside perspective, like not as terrestrial, but just sort of like an abstract and they make more sense that way. In the terrestrial sense though, I still think that, um, you know, there's a lot to be seen. <laughs> I know girl, this is how I feel. I'm like, so I can see what you're saying and I'm like, oh, the archetypal energies, you know, and like, yeah. hey, you know, but then I'm like, don't you fucking put a chip in my head? right 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 that's that's where i think though i don't think i lose sight of his like his control issues when i think of him archetypally i definitely see him as a controlling beast it's grimes i think that i was able to go over but it's like i can't even imagine being someone that's that young and then having tons of talent and people looking at you and then like the third richest guy in the world not at that time but you know 
Right. The third richest known guy, right, in the world is, like, courting you and, like, trying to, like, get with you. It would be too much. It would be too mm-hmm. much. And, like, how do you even handle that as, like, a fair little, you know, wee little woman who is a woman, but still, you know, she's, we're all, like, mill- and this, like, millennial thing. Like, no one's the age we're supposed to be. <laughs> we're all running behind. What is, yeah, I'm like an 80 year old, 14 year old, fucking 30 year old. So it's okay. I know it's quantum, baby. It's quantum. It's you know, we're timeless over here at the gold pill pod. That's but right. I want to say that like next year, Jupiter and Chiron are going to connect in Aries. And it's at this point where I personally anticipate that people are going to start like visibly mutating. Oh, but that's a different story. Like, like, okay, so you know what's so interesting to me is I just recently watched Total Recall for the first time. And I, there, I remember, okay, as I was a kid, I remember seeing commercials for it and being like, these aliens are too much to look at. Well, I'm watching the movie and I realized these aliens that are in the movie only look that way because their planet is so close to the radiation. So they've mutated because of the radiation, right? And like, I was like, oh shit. Because of the radiation, because of their choices. No, this is part of it. There's going to be part of the population that legitimately mutates, like I think. Interesting. You know, so I think like next year, so Chiron and Aries is neglecting individuality, right? We've seen like this massive push since 2018 to make individuality go away right so, you know I think that like it's at that point when Jupiter even now with Jupiter and Aries there's like this energy of like do not fucking neglect yourself do not neglect what you need what you want don't neglect it like because you do better during this transit when you put yourself first but there's a lot of energy out there that's like don't put yourself first put the collective first it's for the great right. good, whatever right. so I think that like at that point like we could see people's like the visible proof of people's neglect of self and neglect of like what the fuck you know right going on right. so it's kind of interesting and I think that that Jupiter so that Jupiter Chiron connection is happening on Elon Musk's midheaven too Oh, shit. So what would you, in our closing situation here, what would you say to the people at home for these transits that are coming up? So you say, go within, you say, put yourself, keep yourself in the balance. Okay. Well, what else comes, are some helpful? I have a couple of things, right? Like when it comes to, oh my God, <laughs> sorry, this like bluebird just popped up. So anyway, the bluebird agrees. Yeah. So I would say that like Aries is the body. Um, so with Jupiter and Aries, like you'll want to work on things like fitness. It's a time where like, I know it doesn't seem this way, but it is definitely like a stream or like a wave in the collective consciousness, right? Where Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. individuality, autonomy, self-reliance, these things are going to be like cropping up more and more. Um, and I also think that, you know, it's really good too to kind of like, I don't know, don't wait around so long to act on, you know, whatever it is that you want. Like things are going to start to move quickly. And I think that it's good to kind of like, it's, it's instinctual. It's like, you know, with Aries energy, it's very like, it's the first moment after you meet someone and you kind of get a sense for trust your instincts. And if you can't trust them, then develop them because it'll serve you well. And, um, and then also I legitimately go ahead, go ahead. I just can't imagine someone's listening to this and like, hasn't started developing their instincts. Like, I just don't feel like gold pill people are that kind, but I know it's for everyone, but I love that. Um, I well, love that. I love to think there's like, I can, actually, I don't love, I can't even imagine there's people that like, I'm so, I was so miserable without my instincts girl so I just I can't I feel bad for these people living without their instincts I get it okay so you know in that vein right there are mm-hmm. so many different kinds of intuition that come mm-hmm. with different energies right so I would yes. say that people who are like like okay maybe there's somebody listening to this who is like naturally a little bit dissociated from their body but still super intuitive you know Mm -hmm. 
it, the type of intuition and intelligence that you want to fuck with is kinesthetic bodily intelligence right now, you know, in terms mm. of like learning, all right, you know, if you have a new partner, how does your body respond to them? Like, what does your body say about that? And kind of like, you know, being more like in touch with that, because that's gonna like tell you at some point, like in this transit, everything that you need to know. And people are going to have more energy, more motivation. I think when Jupiter slows down stations retrograde at the end of July, then it'll be like, Meh. July and August are kind of, sh- you know, meh. but that okay. we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. If we have internet in July and August, which I'm not convinced, I'm sorry, but anyway, so I'm projecting that we will, but I understand everyone has different feelings on that one. Oh my God. It just looks weird. Like in the end of July and the beginning of August. Um, so anyway, but yeah, uh, you know, all of that to say, I think that right now, like with Jupiter and Aries, with the North Node and Taurus, like it's focusing on individuality. It's focusing on like one thing after another, after another, after another, after another, not getting subsumed in the bigger picture. And okay. it's also... I think with people right now and with relationships, um, it's like certain things have to allow you to grow as a person. If it doesn't allow you to grow as a person, then good luck. And also I've been saying for the longest that 2022, you know, these relationships that are being held together by fucking karma are like, I just think that time is up for a lot of people in their relationships. Regardless. Yeah, I hear you there. You know, it just seems like that. Like, either. but not everybody, you know, and you'll know if that's you. Yeah, and you'll know who. I mean, like it's gonna be someone probably that's just not, you know, you'll know who. That's all that's where I'll leave it. Yeah, you know we want to look for like differences in values, like fundamental, irreconcilable differences in values and a difficulty making like maintaining the day-to-day because those two things values and sort of like the grounded experience of life those are Taurus you know how does somebody make your body feel that's literally I and it doesn't have to make any like logical sense of course like people are so like attached sometimes Mm -hmm. to things to the way that their life is that they're never like you know it's right 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 so I think that what is Scorpio in the tarot? It's like the death card or the tower card, right? So this Mm -hmm. eclipse, I think will be for each of us individually, kind of a checkpoint of like, like, what are you still holding on to? What are you still like, you know, expect an up will be a nice release. And that's on the 15th, which closes out the eclipse window. So fucking we're done with that for a second. (laughs) Hallelujah. And we're done with eclipses until later this year. And then we get into more the planetary retrogrades, like starting in June, Saturn's going to go retrograde in July. There's going to be, so it's, you know, it it's ongoing. This year is like four years within a year. So I'm glad we're doing these podcasts to kind of chat about it and, you know, catch up yeah. little yeah, astrological profiles and whatnot, but yeah. Do you have any advice for people at home? I don't have any advice, but I do like, I just posted something today, the gold pill, um, about a girl who feels alone because she doesn't know who to talk to about this stuff. And I've gotten so many interesting comments about that. And I just wanted to say, you guys, I mean, still like vet each other and stuff. Cause that's, that's, that's important, but like, you know, talk to each other. Yeah. It's so helpful. And like, honestly, if you just think like so many of us weren't even talking a year ago and now we're like, you know, great old it friends. Does. So yeah. really just like the gold pill is I wouldn't go so far as to say a safe space because I don't like moderate, but like it is safe and that like the people that are there, to, like from what I have seen, like they believe the things that we believe. And so really like leave comments, reach out to people. Instagram is, you know, it's, they're going to see you. It's a, you know, a watched thing, but just just look, they're already looking. So just <laughs> be, be friendly with people. And like right now is, you know, and then that kind of like opens up, you know, opportunities, even in your material life, you'll just notice you lighten up when you start talking about this stuff with people, because 
it is really, it's really a hard load to carry yourself. But when you start talking with others, it's uh, really helpful. So that's my encouraging words of the day is go find some people online to talk with that you can, you know, that you've talked to a little bit about other things and you can kind of get a rapport. You'll be able to tell. And that will help you develop those, those damn instincts. Organize in the physical, organize system related things. Um, Absolutely. Educate your neighbors. <laughs> If you want yeah. to, I know that can be stressful. Like, I feel like, you know, I could give like a presentation on this shit at this point, but, right. um, you know, it never hurts to broach the conversation. There's plenty of ways to have nuanced chatter about this. I do it all the time. So, you know, well, yeah. And like, when I'm talking about it with people, I have to like, keep myself like in the real world. I have to like, keep myself not in check so much, but just like, I don't want to be the person that's like shitting on their parade either. So I want to make sure whatever I'm presenting to them is like balanced and like relevant and it's like not there to scare them. And really it's like presented more to help, but um, yeah, dude, it's a tough time. And I'm just stoked that people are like feeling like you are feeling up to like, you know, starting some self-sufficient shit and I'm starting gardening. There's just a bunch of stuff that we're all doing. And I think that the more we do that, the more, can control we'll have over our own personal situations yes and the more that we can both online and in the physical yes. organize ourselves as if we actually know that there might be something coming you know I'd say we do so <laughs> I'd say you we know, do know but yeah so you know if we are like able to I mean the thing that just keeps <laughs> It's just getting really, this message is getting so loud. I cannot even handle it, but it's like, put the shit in place before mm -hmm. the shit hits the fan. Like we should have put this in place, but you know. But I we're think, working on it now and that's the real, yes, that's the real, real. Yes. Yeah, so I picture like a countrywide fucking like mycelial network of real people innovating and coming together and like communicating with each other and like very healthy and like you know yes. like just fucking like beautiful get over your fucking opinions like <laughs> this is how it's I okay. feel I know like you know because all right and then I'm gonna say this and then I'm gonna you know close us out we're gonna say sayonara can, right but like okay you know one of the things that I ran into when I was organizing around this in Charlotte was goddamn conspiracy theorists just need yeah. to be right. They need to be heard. They need to be listened to. Yeah. And, um, you know, I don't want papers, please. That's it. Like, yeah, I don't want papers, please. Yeah. And there's so much papers, more. Please. That's it. Like that's yeah. what we don't want. So why the fuck are we like having, I have so many different theories about the shape of the earth and oh my God, like I can totally like, you know, just, I can draw you a diagram of what I think it looks like, but right. who fucking cares? Because right now we don't want papers, please. I just tell you right. if you get anything done or like you know. Yeah, yeah. I feel like there's been enough stuff that has happened that is definitely eerie to even the more casual just observer. So I think it's easier to like kind of point to a possibility of papers, please, as a real thing now that we've gone through the gauntlet of the last two years. And a lot of people who I know that were totally lollipop have like given up on that. They don't want to do that anymore. And I know it's like, that's a whole other thing, but I just mean the will of the people to continue with this charade is dwindling. And so I just, uh, I see that as like, it's much easier to approach people than it was, you know, a couple of years ago about the this. Mind control and the fucking technology shit has worn off. Yes. I love you, girl. I hope that you love have you. a beautiful, amazing day. It's been so nice. Likewise, to with you. Yes, we'll be back soon. And I hope you guys enjoyed our little chit chat about Grimes and Elon Musk. Bye. Yeah. Bye.